We have no choice but to do exactly what I said until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on, because we have a problem in this country. That was Donald Trump on New Day this morning, calling again for a ban on all Muslims entering the U.S. The USA. How are Muslim Americans feeling about this this morning? Let's ask them. Qasem Rashid is the spokesperson for the Ahmadiyya Muslim community. That's the oldest established Muslim sect in the U.S. And Zahir Ali is an oral historian with the Brooklyn Historical Society here in New York. Gentlemen, it is great to have both of you here with us this morning. Both of you are such American success stories <laughs> that I just want to share with Thank the audience you. a little bit about who you are. Qasem, let me start with you. You uh, are a Muslim sure. immigrant from Pakistan. You came here in the 1980s. You are a visiting fellow at Harvard University's Islamic Studies program. Your brother is a U.S. Marine. You are the yes. American dream. How do you feel, Qasem, when you wake up and you hear Donald Trump saying that Muslims like your family should be banned from coming to the U.S.? Well, in one word, shocked. Uh, you know, I represent the Ahmadiyya Muslim community as Muslims who believe in the Messiah, Mirza Ghulam Ahmad of Qadian. We have a strong, uh, uh, you know, persona that we are loyal to our countries of residence. We champion separation of mosque and state. And as a lawyer, I champion the United States Constitution. And so when I see Mr. Trump making these ridiculous remarks and these propaganda dictator style uh, allegations against American Muslims, uh, it reminds me that this is a man who has no idea what the U.S. Constitution actually says. And therefore, he's wholly incapable of serving as commander in chief. With that said, I invite him, come to our mosque, see what we're all about, actually learn about Islam from American Muslims, and you will see that terrorism has nothing to do with Islam whatsoever. Qasem, let me stick with you for one second, because I do want you to educate us a little bit more. You are loyal to the country in which you reside. You put no law over the U.S. Constitution. Donald Trump suggests that Muslims put Sharia law over that. Are you... Are you an anomaly or are you the majority of U.S. Muslims? Well, well, for, for the record, I don't think Donald Trump can even spell Sharia. Let's just be fair about that, uh, let alone know what it is. Uh, the prophet of Islam, Prophet Muhammad, taught that separation of mosque and state is part and parcel of Islam. He famously said that loyalty to your country of residence is part of your faith. So as an American Muslim, as an attorney, I see zero conflict between Islam and America. And in fact, Sharia, as the Prophet Muhammad taught, requires that it is a personal moral code. You can never apply it above the law of the land, and you can certainly never enforce it on a non-Muslim. Okay. Zahir, yes. you are no slouch in the American <laughs> Dream Department yourself. Let me read your history. You came here. Your family is from Trinidad. Yeah. Uh, you moved when you were three years old. You are now getting your Ph.D. at Columbia University. What do you think when you hear that Donald Trump says that Muslims like your family should be banned from the U.S.? Well, you know, I grew up in the Maryland area, but I spent a lot of time in New York as a teenager. And I remember Donald Trump leading the charge against five innocent black and Latino men uh, over the Central Park jogger case. And so this is he's a long history of race baiting. You know, his, his attacks on Mexicans, his tweeting racist and accurate statistics about African Americans and crime. So, in a sense, I'm not surprised. You know, Gossam wants to invite Donald Trump to his mosque. I would invite Donald Trump to my American history classroom because he does not really know the real history of the United States. And, and Zahir, what is it like to be a Muslim American man today in this climate? Well, I think that as a man, we have it a little easier because it's easier to wear clothes in a certain way or facial hair in a certain way and maybe pass as just an average citizen. But I think that the burden has been especially on women, Muslim women who choose to cover their hair or wear other kinds of clothes that mark them. And they have been subject to bullying, to attacks. And, you know, that concerns me greatly. I don't have to tell both of you, Donald Trump is leading in the polls. His supporters believe that he speaks their language. Let me play for you a few of his supporters and what their reaction was to what, what he said about this Muslim ban. Listen to this. That's a very prudent idea, and I think that he's done due diligence when he makes that statement. We have to protect our American citizens first, and the vetting process in the whole program 
lacks integrity. He's just saying no Muslim should be allowed to enter the country right now. You agree? Yes or no? It's that simple. <laughs> yes. Awesome. Look, people are scared, obviously, after what happened in San yeah. Bernardino. So what do you want his supporters to understand? Well, I, I want our supporters, or Trump supporters, to understand that there's no conflict between being a Muslim and being an American. This is a fundamental principle. American Muslims have defended America in every war since the United States was founded. Uh, American Muslims represented 15 to 30 percent of the population of those enslaved from Africa and made into American Muslims here. The lack of Muslim leadership is also an issue here. And I, and I want to be very clear about this, that the fear of Muslims isn't just something that we can pin on politicians. I think Muslim leadership needs to step up and do a more effective job of dialoguing, of engaging. And this is why I'm so adamant come to our mosque. We have 75 chapters around the country. We held prayer vigils after the horrific terrorist attack in California. We are not going to resolve our issues by cutting ourselves off from one another. If we do something or even advocate something like stopping Muslim immigration, we're giving free propaganda to terrorist organizations like ISIS by letting them convince other, radical, other youth prone to radicalization that America hates you. Speaking to those Muslim youth who might consider ISIS as a viable option, let me assure you, as an American Muslim, as an immigrant, America does not hate you. America wants peace. American Muslims want peace. Americans want peace. Do not let the rhetoric of a deranged politician make you uh, decide to do something terrible. Mm. Look at what American Muslims are achieving in America. That should be your example. Qasem Zahir, thank you very much for being here and for your perspective on all of this. We will speak to you again. Thanks so much thank for you. being here. Let's get over to Michael. What a great conversation, Allison. Unity, not division, right?